Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is Leading Off, brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sports books. It's me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia. With me today is the one, the only Scott Bogman. And of course, it's you and everybody listening and watching live on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fantasy pros mlb i see the peanuts and the cracker jacks are here and if you <laughs> haven't become a peanut and a cracker jack yet i don't know what the heck you're waiting for you can watch the show live comment if your comments are good or funny we even bring the comments on to the show we'll make you famous here in bogman we got a lot mm -hmm. to break down today uh including of of course our betting pros picks of the day for some props we got some dfs bogman always brings the the batter versus pitcher information every single uh tuesday when he's here but boggs i know you're bogged down so to speak <laughs> with nfl draft coverage it's nice to have a little palate cleanser a little sorbet of baseball if you will it is you know it's not when you're a d-backs fan but in general it is so you know we're going to talk about the d-backs pretty quick here so you know. yes uh we will we'll get to that let's start with walker bueller tossing the first complete game and shutout of the season in a win over the Diamondback. So there you have it. Uh, Walker Bueller striking out 10. And gee, if only there was somebody screaming to the Hilltops yesterday on the show that uh, Walker Bueller mm. is grossly underpriced on DraftKings. If only there was somebody telling you, here, go make some free money. I hope you made some. This is why you listen to the show. Taylor Ward homers twice as the Angels top the Guardians. A lot of Taylor Ward buzz here, Bachman. What do you make yeah. of the hot start for Ward so far? Hey, I like it. You know, uh, two bombs today is fantastic. Um, I've added him in a couple spots. So, uh, look, uh, this is a the guy they said is going to be the uh, everyday guy. And here he is rewarding you with two bombs. So uh, thumbs yeah. up for Taylor Ward. Yeah, Taylor Ward uh, certainly looking good. A lot of people getting uh, give me questions about him. What do you think? Like, I always say the same thing. If they're there, you can get them. Pick them up. What do you have to lose, right? Unless sure. it's a really shallow league and it's really tough, then I understand. But in any league where a guy's red hot and you think, hey, this is worth a shot, you never know how long ride that way. Last. You got to be like wave. a surfer. I mean, you jump on the wave, you ride it, and then when it's over, you get off. It's fine. It's easy. It's fine. It's fine. Or some guys just never crash. I mean, up until you know April of this year, Whit Merrifield's never crashed, right? Remember, everyone's like, <laughs> right. what do we do with this guy? We're like, well, pick him up and see what happens. Well, I'm sure he'll <laughs> rebound, but still. Uh, crazy game yesterday in St. Louis. Max Scherzer whips 10 in seven scoreless innings. Incredible performance for him. Then the Mets that's down. 106 start with 10 strikeouts right? or more for him. Ugh. It's that's it's just crazy. Really, really glad I can't remember what the D-backs traded for uh, to, to trade away Ooh. Max Scherzer. I think we got Max like DD back from uh, uh, the Yankees and something else. That was like a three way trade, wasn't it? I can't remember what it was. It was. I'm going to look it, it up. Was. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks if, or Bogman. Somebody looked that up and let us know. So the Mets end up scoring five runs in the ninth inning to beat the Cardinals. And the wackiest part is it all kind of, you know, came to fruition with a Nolan Arenado error, which we don't see very often. One of the best <laughs> defensive third basemen. And you could tell he just didn't have a good grip on the ball. He tried to rush it, tried to make the play. He just didn't make it. And then Pandora's box was open. Bo Bichette opened up a can of whoop ass. Go ahead. Grand slam in the eighth. We talked just yesterday, oh. just yesterday, Bogman. We were, we were on point yesterday. It was like, look, Whit Merrifield, Bo Bichette. There's a bunch of guys struggling. Go make offers of them right now today. Don't hesitate. Now, guess what? The window shut because he had a huge day. Jock Peterson hits his sixth home run of the season. Some good news Jock on the injury front. Fire. I know. Jock is How about fire. That? But doesn't he do this, Jock Peterson? He, like, he comes in streaks, Jock right? Right. Like he comes right. and goes in streaks. It, it's going to be really good right now. going to be really bad later. By the way, I looked it up. It was Curtis Granderson going Man. to the Tigers, Ian Kennedy, and Edwin Jackson going to the D backs. That's what they got for Max Scherzer. So Ian Kennedy and Edwin Jackson. Ooh, wow. Yep. Now, AJ Ooh. Hinch proceeds to ruin Edwin Jackson's career by letting him go 180 pitches right. in an eight walk, no hitter. And Ian Kennedy, Ian Kennedy is pretty good. The Cy Young runner up uh, behind Clay Kershaw one year, but Kennedy had not someone. Max Scherzer. So no not a hall of Famer. No, not Max Scherzer. Uh, also, Max Scherzer is not Jacob deGrom. Some good news, at least we think, because it seems like the MRI yesterday showed and I'm going to use all the correct quotes here. Quote, okay. considerable healing, end quote. DeGrom has been cleared to begin, quote, loading and strengthening, end quote. Does that mean shoulder. he could just I don't know. allowed to move his arm again? Like, because that's kind of what it sounds loading. like. 
Yeah. Loading and strengthening is the funniest term. I've I've never seen this term in all the sports stuff we've covered. So I thought this was a new one and I wanted to bring it up. I don't, have you ever heard of the loading and strengthening? No, but I've never been through like physical therapy before. So it's got to be a PT ther- uh, term is uh, what I'm thinking here. So uh, I guess it's good news, but it's not like this puts a time frame on Jacob deGrom now or anything. They're just like, hey, he's, you know, he's allowed to move his arm right now. So it won't fall off later. So uh, I guess this is good news. It's it's better than nothing, I'll say. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but I mean, I got one team where I got Chris Sale, Jacob DeGrom, and Jack Flaherty. So it's not going very well in my teaching. Sounded good in paper, so, in theory. I mean, on paper, that's a great. Team. I mean, if we're talking about video games, that's a great uh, rotation. They can't get hurt. <laughs> Here's wonky <laughs> penguin here for the peanuts and cracker checks. DeGrom will be meeting with his psychic astrological arm physician tomorrow as well. That's right. always good news. And then next um, week is his meeting with the palm reader. So he'll be fine. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Loading after the show, I'm going to be loading and strengthening. I'm going to say this. I think it's very clear that the way the Mets have gotten off to the hot start, the way the pitching and the starting realm of, has been so good as well. I'm still thinking July. Cause if we're looking at it reasonably, right. If it takes all of, May for him to load and strengthen and get back right to some sort of strength where he can go and and pick up a ball again. Then it's going to be at least three weeks to ramp him up again with starts, probably two to three weeks, somewhere in that range, unless they really rush him, which I doubt they're going to do. So I'm thinking, look, mid June would be awesome. But if you get him back before the all star break, I think that'd be spectacular. But I I just think they are so focused right now on on waiting. So here's the one thing I will say if you have the Grom and you want to get out from under, this is kind of the week to do it because you got a positive note. Yeah. And I think you have to be realistic. You've still got a good six weeks ahead of you, at least if not eight before you're going to see him on a mound. If everything goes right and there's no setbacks, that's my window for DeGrom. What is, what's your thought process on that? Yeah. I mean, you're under the, the thought of he, he comes back and is closing too, right? Isn't that kind of your whole, well, that was my big bold prediction that if right. He if he can't ramp up or if he has another issue, in this process that just that he comes a back as a reliever as a high leverage reliever where you just go out there and let him rip it for anything. And then that's fine. He doesn't have that constant right. build and the constant arm stress of pitch after pitch after pitch for inning after inning. I mean, I don't think he's going to pitch this year. So uh, th- oh. this, this is oh. good news right now. Uh, oh, like George is- Jefferson. Help me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Reference, but... it, this is good news right now. So I'm, you know, if you can get like Tariq Skubal or somebody for him, I might do that. Like, I just, I don't see, I don't see how he pitches this year. It seems like he's destined for surgery and that's not great news. So we'll see. But I wish, Hopefully I wish not. Had this, but the problem is it's on what every, every time he gets hurt, it seems to be something else. It's the elbow. Then it's the shoulder and it's something else. Like I got, you got to give him a T 1000 like, arm like Terminator. Oh, you got to give him the mechanical arm, I guess. I don't know what's happening, We're but fine with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't this what happens when you don't get Tommy John surgery on your elbow, then your shoulder starts to go. So, <clears throat> you know, this is not a uh, is not a good scenario. This is good news. Doesn't mean it has made it a good scenario. So who would you so rather have rest of season? Kyle Wright or Jacob deGrom? Kyle Wright. Oh, wow. No hesitation. I just figured I'd put that out there. All right. Yeah, I mean, I Other... know if he plays, that's a ridiculous take, but I don't think he's going to play. We'll see. Well, that's fair. But that's it's baked into the, the question. That's why right. I asked it. The guy who's gotten off to a red hot start. Nothing but clear skies and potential versus the guy that's not pitching right now. I think it's a valid point to ask because I'm sure that's a move in some leagues you could pull off on either sure. side if you wanted to right now, like depending on what what your view is of the DeGrom situation. Uh, Kevin Biggio placed on the COVID-19 list. Eddie Rosario having procedure for blurred vision. So keep an eye on that. I guess it's at least we, at least that explains what was happening with him because Welsh and I were looking at his numbers the other day on ITL. And I'm like, this guy has three hits on the year. It's like three or four hits and 44 at bats. He was hitting right around a hundred, which was awful. I'm like, what is wrong with him? And then it comes out the next day, he's going to have surgery on his eyeball. So uh, I think they said eight to 12 weeks on that. So it's going to be a little bit, but Mm -hmm. at least we have a reason why he was so terrible. Uh, Angel Hernandez also set to get that same surgery, hopefully on his eyes. Lots of blurred vision. Brandon Marsh uh, is going to be back apparently in the lineup today. So keep an eye on that. Can we talk about this Bogman? Can we talk about the, I'm sure you've seen it at some point, the Garrett Cole, uh, butt touching, uh, if you will, his own, butt. don't worry, don't call HR. Uh, oh, it was okay. Garrett Cole in the game on Sunday. He had a, uh, <laughs> let's just say a, a little bit of a, a brown stain on his right 
uh, butt ah. up. And he kept going back and forth to it after every. It pick. wasn't from he sliding. Was, kinda, was I don't believe it was from sliding because I don't know where he would have slid. But I, I mean, it, and it was oh. the best start of the year. Just saying. Hmm. Look at that. Mm. That's weird. Um. Yeah. I mean. Uh, at least he didn't slather it all over his neck like Michael Pineda, right? At least it looks somewhat natural there. I mean, it doesn't look good, but it looks somewhat natural there. But I mean, I mean, how does no one notice this? Uh, why are we talking about it after the fact? So do you, do you think he's going to have to do like a little spin for the umpire? Like they usually check I don't your know. Uh, your gloves and your hat and everything. Do a, do a little spin for us do there, a, Garrett a Cole. Spin around. Let's a do a little, little spin. spin. I, I, yeah. In our private chat here on the SY, I put in the uh, the link if you haven't seen it yet. I wanted to get your live reaction because it's pretty obvious. You know, he, he's ba you know he's throwing gas and the ball is moving a lot, and then he goes right back and swipe. Now, as a, as someone who has rostered Garrett Cole huh. uh, in a very important league, I'm fine with this. I got no problem. <laughs> like, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I feel like yeah, in baseball. It's kind of the end, but it's pretty obvious. He just keeps going back to it, back to it. I mean. Obviously, well, here's the most annoying thing about baseball, Joe. Degree. Here's the most yeah. annoying thing about baseball. This will be taken care of within a start or two, and Angel Hernandez won't. Like, Angel <laughs> Hernandez is going to keep calling games, right? And this will get taken care of, though. And he might get a suspension or something. We'll, we'll, they, I guess he can't prove anything now, so probably won't get a suspension. But this won't happen again now that it's been pointed out uh, to a bunch of people. I can't imagine it happens again. So uh, very strange, very strange. Uh, yeah, I, I, his, his quote was uh, pretty funny, too, about it when asked about it. So he didn't freak out it. and panic and not talk for 10 seconds like, oh, and then cry. Did he do any of that again? <laughs> no, basically, no? why does everything need to be something, you know, whatever? I mean, like, it's well, well because you kept going. Why do you make it you so obvious, art. stupid? Put it on your belt, you idiot. Why do you put it on a white uniform? Like, put it underneath your cap and rub your cat something. Make it a little less conspicuous, Garrett. What are you doing? Come on, Garrett. I, I've never Garrett. heard anybody. That was like such a parent. What are you doing, Garrett? Oh, that what was amazing. What are you amazing. doing, was... Garrett? That's, uh, my, that's all my dad baseball... energy that I'll ever have is right there. I was going to say, because so. you never have the dad energy. That's like me <laughs> no. and Welsh's job. You're well, I'm all up in it today. That's true. That's true. This day in baseball history, this is fun, considering we started talking about uh, um, Bo Bichette before. Dante Bichette in 1995, on this date, in Coors Field, the National League's first baseball-only stadium in Colorado in 23 years, opens in dramatic fashion in Denver, and Dante Bichette hits a three-run homer in the 14th, an 11-9 uh, victory over the Mets, by the way. Uh, I'm trying to remember... Who started that game? For, I, I actually, I think I do know. I do know. Trivia question: Who started that game? Do you remember? Denny Nagel. I have, oh, no, yeah, no, Denny no. Nagel. I don't know. Mike Hampton. I have no idea. No. no. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks. If Kevin you Brown. A, no. No. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Anybody want to take a shot at this one here in the chat? No. Go ahead. I'll give you a couple so my, seconds. Here. My buddy has a funny Dante Bichette story. He's at spring training. A bunch of guys are yelling at him, calling him fat. Like, you're so fat, Dante. You're so fat. And Bichette reaches down, picks up a big old wad of grass, looks at him, and then sticks it in his mouth and acts like he's chewing on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll give you a hint, Peanuts and Cracker Jacks, by the way. Mm -hmm. It was their first selection in the uh, expansion draft or whatever that was. So uh, that that's was another thing. And I remember the guy's name because I remember having his baseball card and going, oh, cool. This guy's a Rocky. The Rockies are new. That was so much fun, man. Way, when we had what, when, what year draft. was that expansion draft? 93 <sighs> expansion draft was 93. Uh, because they yeah. started playing. Uh, in no, 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 right? no, they came in in 90. Uh, yeah, the expansion draft they came was in 93. in 93, right? So, uh, was, man, I can't remember who it was. Who was it? And the answer is David Need. Remember David Need? David, well, again, Need. you were you were a kid. You were just a lad. I don't like really David remember Need. David Need. No, I remember. I remember them signing Mike Hampton to that huge deal. I remember them signing Denny Nagel, or did they draft Denny Nagel? I can't remember which one it was in that expansion. David draft. Need made the first start ever in Rockies history. That was the guy. Wow. So, uh, good. Do you remember who made David the first Need. start ever in Diamondbacks history? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, that was ninety eight. history. Little closer, but still, you know. Give me a give me ago. a hint and then I'll think about it while I um while I he uh he played for the Cardinals before the Diamondbacks as a starter. Okay. All right, I'll think on that one. Okay. Stat heroes of last night, Walker Bueller, nine innings, 10 Ks for him. We talked about that. Corbin Burns, 11 strikeouts. 
did get the no decision, though. We talked about Walker Bueller on DK being the better guy, though, because path to the victory was very clear there. Michael Lorenzen, uh, six innings, no earned, just three Ks, four walks, but he did get the W for Ember. Valdez was solid again. Got the no decision, though, five Ks for him. Scherzer was dominant. Uh, Miles Nicolas, uh, five Ks, one walk, seven strong innings, no earned runs for him. He was very sharp. Nate Evaldi, uh, five Ks from him, just two earned runs over seven. Barrios was good, too. Uh, two earned runs for him, no decision against the Red Sox. And, of course, the hitters yesterday, Taylor Ward with the two home runs. Will Smith, Welsh is finally up on the board. He's up to two yeah. right now. Uh, Jordan Alvarez with a home run. <laughs> that was the other guy we talked about buying. Jordan Alvarez, Whit Merrifield, and Bichette. Those are the three guys. So, yeah. And we talked about Kyle Tucker, who then was three for four. The Astros were a stack of the night yesterday. So, my goodness, I hope you made money. Uh, Brandon Nimmo, one for five, but he had a big two-run home run. Uh, Grichuk also with a grand, uh, excuse me, Grichuk with a home run. Also, we mentioned Bichette's grand slam, Reese Hoskins had a good night, Bryce Harper with a dinger and Jock Peterson continues on and Connor Joe with another home run too. What do you make of Connor Joe? He uh, looks because this is a guy right that kind of, he was, he was a little divisive. I think this off season, and then you saw Tapia get moved to Toronto and that sort of opened up the path for the joke, uh, the Connor Joe truthers. But do you yeah. think this is sustainable for him? I don't know if it's sustainable at this level, but he can be a solid outfielder for you for the rest of the season. So that's that's what you like about him. You know, these guys at the end of your bench, all you're looking for is someone that won't hurt you. You know, that's it. And Connor Joe seems to be that guy. He's got a very, very good eye. And, you know, I tell you who else has been impressive, who you mentioned here. Michael Lorenzen has been fairly yeah. impressive here. You know, I think he's had really one bad inning the whole season. So uh he's been great did, did you come up with that uh you come up with that first starter in d-backs history joe i didn't and i was thinking about cardinals and i'm trying to think of like in that era so what year was it this was 98 98 cardinals picture no who was it andy bennis oh wow andy bennis i should have gotten that God, andy bennis i just remember Elaine that like his brother the, yeah, of course uh, i just remember <laughs> He's coming out to go to the mound for the first time for anyone in D-backs history. And I'm watching on TV and he is just grabbing his jock strap. Like, I don't know what's going on there, but he is, he is adjusting it a lot. And I was like, dude, th this is a moment. What are you doing, bud? So, uh, but, but he was, he was not very good. I remember a lot of Rockies hit homers into the pool and stuff. So, you know, just the way it All goes. Right. Clayton Courtney, who's keeping me honest here. Yes. I would just to be specific who made, the first start in Rockies history oh. is what I was asking. Not that specific game, not the one in Colorado. Yes, David Needs started the first game in Rockies history, but it was on the road. You are correct. So Clayton is correct on that one. So I don't know who made that first start in Colorado. That way I would have to dig a little deeper. Let's get to the zeros. Basically, it's Giovanni Gallegos last night with the four hits, four earned runs, Ooh. blown save. Not a good night for him, especially in those points leagues where you get minus for the loss and the blown save and the whole thing. That's a, that's a nice minus 18 <laughs> or something, something that's like, like that. everything like, good walker Bueller just did for you is wiped away in a third of an much. inning by guy Eagles. pretty Ooh. much yuck closers suck uh all right starling Marte over five two k's brandon crawford with an over and the hat trick otani over with two k's dylan carlson continues to struggle he's down to 203 no home runs 14 games so far dylan carlson i've gotten more dylan carlson trade questions than any other question on twitter where do you stand on the Dylan Carlson side? Are you in the buy low or just get out and move on? I think I'm in the buy low uh, side here. I just, I can't imagine it stays this bad all year long. And it's just, uh, I'm, you know, uh, like most people, I'm a buy low and a sell high guy. So I have a real hard time selling a guy when he's at his, you know, very bottom here. So um, would you drop him for like a tail uh, ward or somebody like that on the waiver wire? You know what? Yeah. If Taylor Ward's available, I could see doing that for sure. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think you, you waited long enough on a guy like that. So yeah, if your league is shallow enough to where a guy like Taylor Ward's floating around there for you, then I would do that. Yeah. All right. Could tell Marte also over four with a K. Uh, he's at a buck 56 right now through 17 games. No homers. To me, this has a lot to do with also lineup protection and he's, lack pressing. Of this lineup. He's, pressing. he's pressing. He's pressing. He wants to hit a homer every single at bat. You know, that's the that's what I watch the most is Diamondbacks baseball because I'm a psychopath. So uh, but get could tell Marte. <laughs> You can tell he is absolutely pressing up there. So he's mm -hmm. going to get it right as soon as he calms down. I think he's trying to live up to this contract he just signed. And you can't do it all in a week, Cattell. Settle down. You and Garrett, relax. All right? So, relax. Simmer. 
Garrett. Sim simmer down now. <laughs> simmer down now. Let's get to the home run board. Boom. The Night King up to eight. Oh, my goodness. Night King of the North up to eight oh, bombs. God. Uh, was that BMAC A12 at six? JP's at six. Brant Cox at six. So a lot of people at six. I'm still at one because I'm a miserable person and I'm just so unhappy uh, with how April's going. Me and Dylan Carlson, Stone Cold. Uh, so far, let's get to the uh, prop market for the day a little bit and chat about these and our special offer for new users. Bet $10 and win 200 at BetMGM, the king of sports books. Sign up today, download the BetMGM app or go to BetMGM.com. Enter the promo code leading off. It's very important. You enter the promo code leading off. And when you do, the world is your oyster. So go to BetMGM right now, enter that promo code and start looking at the prop bets and all the fun things. Plus the draft is coming up. This is the perfect week to start Playing around with this stuff, if you haven't, lots of fun wagers on the board at BetMGM for the NFL Draft coming up, which we're also going to be hosting, by the way, here live with me, Joey P., and all my friends Thursday night and Friday night on our regular Fantasy Pros channel. Not MLB, of course, just Fantasy Pros. So today, here's what, um, in terms of the prop market and uh, you know your thoughts on this, anything pop out to you before I get to some of mine, or do you have a chance to look at that yet today? Um, not, Nothing's really uh, leaping out. What What did you like? Yeah, uh, for me, I think um, the biggest point that I was trying to get to was also driving home that now things are have, have righted the ship a little bit. You know, we talked earlier in the season about how some of these K props have been very low. Some of these other things have been pretty low. Uh, for me, looking at Jordan Hicks, that was the first one that popped out. This is just, I think, a gimme. Uh, he's going against the Mets today. And I know we promised one of our avid listeners more Jordan Hicks conversation. <laughs> uh, I actually picked him up in my home league this week on Fandle. He is just three and a half uh, projected at five right now. Uh, you get minus minus one Oh four. It's a pretty good number on Jordan Hicks. So I like that one. Hearn is an interesting one too, because it's set so low. So all of a sudden, because some of these guys are back and, and pitching out of bullpens or ramping up a little bit, we've seen the K prop numbers go from too low to being corrected. And now some of these guys who are getting into rotations or some of these younger pitchers, they've completely suppressed again. So Hearn's right. another guy, 3.5. Uh, he's at projected at five today. You know, it's a tough matchup against Houston, but again, there's some strikeouts in that lineup potentially as well. Uh, looking around also, I think the third thing, eventually I feel like Joey Votto is going to turn around. He is just 0.5 on the total bases right now. And that's over at bed MGM. So bed MGM's Joey Votto total bases, uh, Hearn for the pitcher for the uh, Texas Rangers day, three and a half on FanDuel and then over on uh, FanDuel as well. Jordan Hicks at three and a half. Uh, what do you make of Hicks so far? I mean, we all know the stuff is good, but what do you think his prospects are of sticking as a starting pitcher for a longer period of time in 2022? Well, I tell you what, if Gallegos looks this bad again soon, then they might uh, that's a great point. Nick Hicks, it's a great point in box. the back end, you know, uh, because the uh, guy goes to look terrible so far. So, uh, that hasn't been good. Uh, he he's been fine, but it always like even a guy like Hunter green, you know, and, and guys like Chapman, they come up as these starters, but it just seems like guys that throw that hard are destined for the bullpen, you know, uh, mm -hmm. cause if you throw that hard then you probably can't make it last very long, Jacob DeGrom. So, you know, uh, I, I think, I think he's better suited for the back end, but it is easier to trade for a closer to, uh, than a starter. So, uh, if, if that's the route that the Cardinals want to go, Hicks could stick here. I think he's best suited for the back end though. I like the Sandy Al Alcantara over four and a half strikeouts tonight, by the way, against Washington. I think that's a pretty solid one. That is a good one. Speaking of Alcantara, let's talk about uh, some of our guys tonight. DFS. We'll start on DraftKings with Alcantara, who's 9.4 against the Nats. A pretty good investment there. Uh, Luis Severino's at 9.2 tonight going against Jordan Lyles. Now, Lyles is just 5.5 on DK, and he's pitched pretty well. Uh, Bog is going to show you some scary yeah. numbers against Stanton for Lyles. <laughs> but other than that, I mean, Lyles has been pretty good. If you want to go crazy oppo here, Man, 5.5, you can basically have all your cake and eat it too. Kevin Gossman, 8.7 uh, in this matchup against the Red Sox tonight too. That's on the table. The Cubs have struggled. So has Marcus Stroman in Atlanta. I think you've got to look at Max Freed tonight. I think Eduardo Rodriguez is in play at 6.3 as a secondary arm. Uh, Chris Bassett's been terrific at 9.8, but it is on the road. It is against the Cardinals. Pretty good team. So fading that. Hicks at 7.4. I just wonder again when I've got Hicks at 7.4. 
And I've got Rodriguez at 6.3. I just feel like Rodriguez is a guy who can go longer in the game potentially. That's the He's only thing so I want that bad, quality start. Though. Erod has I know, so but, bad but you know what? Year. It's been so cold in Detroit also. And like, I don't okay. know. I just want to give him a pass. I mean, not that Minnesota is any warmer. Uh, and then, of course, <laughs> if you want to go chalky tonight, it's Carlos Rodon at 10.1. You've got to be loving this Carlos Rodon run, eh? I mean, imagine, Dude. like, if anybody's loving this, you are. I mean, I like him, but I think I was lowest on the fantasy pros ECR on Carlos Rodon because I, I don't. Sarcasm. He, that's what I was he, saying. He ain't, <laughs> he ain't going to make it through the season, though. Like, that. that's the whole thing. You know, we talked to Nick Pollock. Um uh, about him the pitcher list uh you know uh head honcho over there and he said yeah he, he he didn't have a lot of glowing things to say about him so uh i don't know man yeah but it's he just... loved john means too so what are you gonna do well <laughs> i mean that but that isn't that the point i that's what i said about john means and he goes down i just carlos Rodon is a top three talent that won't make it all the way through the season is basically what Nick said. And, and I'm, I'm going to follow that. Uh, I just don't think he'll make it all the way through the year. So yeah, Nick said about um, as good as it gets. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while you can right now. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Ride that wave until it, Ride the uh, wave, you know, baby. hopefully it doesn't get too high and kill you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> let's get to the, let's get to the fan duel part here before we, uh, we kick off. We got Brandon Woodruff uh, at uh, 10, K against the Pirates is a really good one here. Uh, potentially, this is the 635 start there. Uh, then you've got Joe Musgrove over the 10.8. Uh, now, here's another question for you, Box. When you're looking at the mm -hmm. BVP numbers tonight, what kind of jumped out at you that you thought was a really good uh, opportunity? Well, how about stacking against Daniel Lynch? Because the White Sox as a team are 15 for 26. That's a 609 average with four bombs, wow. a double, and a triple against him. So, that is what really stands out to me the most is maybe just stack some White Sox tonight. Bo Bichette, who just hit that grand slam, is eight for 17 with two bombs and two doubles against Nick Pavetta. So we like that one. Uh, Cody Bellinger, who is starting to get hot, five for 15 with a bomb against Zach Davies, who is starting for the D-backs tonight for some reason. Uh, Xander Bogarts, 14 for 43 with a bomb and two doubles versus Gossman. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton, who you mentioned before, Six of 12, a homer and two doubles for Shorten Lyles, but he's been cold. So like you said, if Lyles is a guy that you like and almost he's going to be close to 0% rostered because they're playing the Yankees, not a bad buy, not, not a bad thought. Like like you mentioned before, Jay Martinez, five for 12 with a bomb against Gossman. Juan Soto, eight for 22 with two bombs against Alcantara. Marcus Simeon, five for 14, two homers, two doubles versus Otto Rizzi. Maybe he is going to get out of his slump against Jake O. Trey Mancini, 6 for 12 with a bomb against Severino. Carlos Correa, 6 for 10 with a double against Erod. Uh, and the last one here I'll mention is Ozzy Albies, 5 for 13 versus Stroman, who you mentioned before, uh, you know, a little stack against them. All right, let's get to our home run calls for the night. Oh, my God. I, I really, I'm just a disgrace to myself and others. I keep going back and forth, and now I'm in my head. This is the worst because <laughs> I've, I've had like three different guys on there. I'm going to go with uh, one of your guys, actually, tonight that was in this mix. You were talking about the BVP numbers. I'm going to go with Stanton in Yankee Stadium. How good can Jordan Lyles be for how long? I don't know. <laughs> well, at least Stanton's one of these guys that's due, and Stanton's another guy that could hit two in a night. We all know that. So I'm going to go with you and Carl Stanton tonight. I'm going to change my home run call on the fly. Bogman, where are you going for your home run call tonight? I'm going to go with Jordan Alvarez. Uh, I've been going with some of these PVB guys, and it hasn't really worked out for me. I think I have one on Nolan Arenado like last weekend. Uh, so let's go with Jordan Alvarez. Guy's been hot. Let's get me back up on this board. All right. Mike Mayer is going to take Mike Trout. So one Mike to another there. And again, if you want to make your home run call, get over and join our Fantasy Pros Discord channel at fantasypros.com slash chat. It's free to join the Discord, but to make home run calls and to get involved in the stages and the AMAs and all the fun stuff we do there, you have to be a premium member of Fantasy Pros, which is honestly well worth it because you can manage all your leagues from our tools at Fantasy Pros. If you're in like six leagues, it doesn't matter. You can manage them all from one spot. We link up to CBS or ESPN. It doesn't matter what leagues you play on, where Yahoo, all that stuff. You can do and manage all your lineups in one spot. You don't have to go from place to place to place, app to app. It's really easy. It's really convenient. And everybody likes convenient and easy things, that's for sure. And uh, honestly, it's, I don't know why, if, you know, if you're playing fantasy seriously, you're not a member already, but, but go do it. And then make some home run calls. There's plenty of time to catch up. Just like everybody, you know, was out there in, in April hitting six and eight home runs. It comes back to earth. It certainly does, you know, level out as the time goes on. So I've got 
Stanton, you've got Alvarez, Mayor's got Trout, uh, Welsh is ahead of us. This this is no good. We can't have this <laughs> last. We got to make sure we figure something out. Final thoughts, Boggs, on today's show before we head out. How about a D-backs win against the Dodgers? Let's go get it. Come on. I don't want to. My buddy Jesse in here has been, uh, you know, hammering me because uh, he's a Dodgers fan. So let's go D-backs. Come on, get a win. There you go. The D-backs win. It's very rare. You don't see them very often. <laughs> and I saw Oliver Perez designated for assignment yesterday. So peace out to Ali P. I just can't yeah. believe that guy was still in the league. I could have like, <laughs> he's like, he's Getting 110 years old. Up. Yeah. He is uh, the last guy older than me in the league. So a D-backs <laughs> win as rare as Joe's hair. Look at that. On that note, that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Scott Bogman, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. See ya.